Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial with PSD Box. I'm Andre, and in this video I want to show you how to make this uh, manipulation. So this is gonna be another manipulation tutorial. It's an intermediate level tutorial, so even though I'll explain everything step by step, because I wanna, I want all of you to follow me. So um, I wanna go step by step, so you can uh, follow my instructions here. Uh, but you need a uh, basic understanding of Photoshop, so how to work with the uh, layers, adjustment layers and things like that, and clipping masks and, uh, well, that, that kind of things. And well, this is the result that uh, we will get at the end uh, of this uh, tutorial. This artwork received the first daily deviation in on DeviantArt, so it's the first time I got one, and well, I was really excited about it. And it's, it's also the first time I, I showed this artwork was in a workshop that I made in Barcelona in March. And well, uh, now I just got to make the tutorial now because I didn't have time. So well, let's get started. Okay, so before we start, um, a few things to keep in mind if some, if any of this uh, stock images that we're going to use on this manipulation is no longer available, well, just search for another image. This is a, I receive a lot of messages from people that um, send me, well, comments on YouTube or on my website telling me that uh, this image is not available anymore. Well, just search for another image and that's it. It's not big deal. Uh, there are tons of free images on the internet, so you have a lot of uh, alternatives. Uh, just search for something else or for example uh, instead of uh, let's say this suitcases are no longer available or or this um, axe or something uh, just search for something else to to put there and that's it they don't necessarily have to make the exact manipulation that i do what i'm trying to show you here is the techniques and well maybe the idea composition and stuff like that but uh, just use a different image and that's it no no problem so to start with this manipulation what I always do, well, in all my manipulations, usually what I do is create the background. A lot of people have been asking, well, how do I start? Uh, what should I do first? Well, what makes sense to me is to make the background first and create the ambient, you know, and then all the elements that I add to that background, I um, integrate them, I adapt them to that to that uh, background. So that's uh, what I try to do uh, most of the times. And I will create a new document. I know the, exa the exact size that I have for this, but uh, if you don't know the size that you want to end up with, well, the first thing you should, uh, you should um, think of is if you want, like in this case, a portrait, uh, land a portrait format, sorry, or a landscape format. A landscape format is, is, um, it's wider than taller so in this case i have a portrait for a portrait format and i chose this because well you, you can see all this um this tree uh, here and this uh, pole here with this uh, road sign and i wanted to have all of them i didn't want to crop them that's why i chose this um this format uh, i tried the landscape format and it didn't work really well i had a lot, a lot of empty space and it made sense for me to use this uh, portrait this portrait um, format. So we will use this uh, same format for the tutorial. And uh, you can start by opening one of the stock images and go from there. So I'll open the stock folder. And I started with this image. Let's see how wide it is. It's 2000 pixels uh, wide. Let's see the original. It's a bit wider, but anyway, let's leave it at uh, 2000 pixels. And I, from this image, I only wanted to have this, um, I just wanted to use the horizon here, uh, the trees and, and uh, well, this trees here. Then I opened another image, which is the sky. Okay, so let's select the entire campus or pressing Control or Command A. Sorry for the noises outside. I usually record the tutorials at night because it's quieter, but uh, well. And what I will do now is unlock this background layer by pressing and holding the Alt key and double clicking on the background layer. And you can see it unlocks it and it, it turns it into a normal layer. And I'll paste my sky image here by pressing Control V. And you can see it's a lot bigger than this 
canvas, but uh, it doesn't matter. Let's call this horizon. And let's name this sky. And what we need to do now is change the canvas. And for that, you can press Alt, Command, and C, or Alt, Control, um, C, in, if you're using a PC. And I'm going to I'm going to change the the height to 3,000 pixels, and press Enter to accept the change, and reduce the zoom a bit. And I will re-enable the sky layer, and I will press Control Command T to load the free transform, and I'll press the Shift key to constrain the proportions and scale this down a bit, something like that, and. Actually, I'll leave it a bit bigger just in case I have to resize it. Something like that, because I want to overlap this horizon here because I'll use the gradient and I want to have a smooth transition. So I, I want to have some room here. If I decrease the opacity a bit, I want to have some room here to blend the two images. And the next thing, the next thing that I'll do is open the other image of the road, which is this one. So I'll select again Control A to select the entire canvas, Control C, Control W to close it, and Control V to paste it here. And I'll change the name of this to Road. So now we have three layers, and this will make up our background. And for for now, I will hide this road layer, and let's work on these two images for the sky and the horizon. And let's see what uh, we can do. What we can do is Put the sky below the horizon layer. That way we see uh, the the other image. And I'll create a layer mask for the horizon layer by clicking on this icon. And you can use brushes if you want, but it's all easier to work with um, gradients if you have like um, horizontal lines. This is a straight, fairly straight horizon, so we can use the gradient map. The yeah, the gradient, uh, the gradient tool, sorry, not the gradient map. And let's reset our gradient because we want the black and white. So choose black and white, click OK. And we'll, we will use the linear type, so this uh, linear gradient. Maybe it's, go it's going to come up inverted, we'll see. And what I want to do is I want to have a smooth transition and I'll, I want to have this tree visible. So I'll start maybe from here and drag up. But uh, I want to make sure that this gradient is straight, so I'll press the Shift key while I create this line, so you can see now it snaps, so I can create a, a straight line. And I'll drag this line to about here and let go. And you can see how it creates that smooth transition. You can even start lower if you want, just to see uh, what you can do. Let's see where that, uh, where that line ends, it's right there, so I can start from down here to about there. And you can see how smooth that transition uh, is. And now if um, now you can adjust the sky because, uh, for example, if you have it down here, well, even so, the transition is really smooth, so you cannot even tell the difference. But now you can adjust the sky to m place it there and make it fit your image. Let's leave it there. OK, let's zoom out a bit so we can see the entire canvas. And now I can go and re-enable this road layer. And let's do the same, let's create a layer mask for it. Choose the gradient again, and in this case, uh, I have to start from, from, from lower, not from the horizon up, because I don't, I don't need the sky here. I want my gradient to end here, so what I will do is click here and drag up. Like so, I know it's not looking nice, but uh, we will fix it. And now use the move tool and drag this up because I want to have it somewhere there. Something like that. And now we can re remake that um, that gradient. It has to be um, the transition has to be a bit more a bit harder, not as smooth as as um, on the background, on the horizon layer. And now what I will do, I have this gap here, what I will do is drag it down because I want to see if I can fix this. Since I have a bit of sky here that um, 
I, I had left from the from the other image so you can see it's bigger I can drag the sky down like that and now I can drag the horizon down okay and now I can drag this up a bit because I want the road to end on the horizon here something like that and now you can see that it's not looking good on the edges because this horizon is not really straight on the road layer so I'll select the layer mask for the road layer get the brush tool and I make sure the opacity and the flow are too well I can leave them at about 80% and make sure you use a soft brush and a fairly big brush depending on the size of, the, of your canvas and now just a brush to smoothen the, the edges here and make a good transition I, okay, something like that. Be careful here on the on the road. Uh, the colors don't match right now, but uh, we will fix that. We will use a hue saturation to match the to match the colors. And now you can see that um, we have this gap here, so we don't need that. So what we can do is, is use the crop tool. So choose the crop tool and just crop it like so. Make sure you you make sure you have the road exactly as you want it because once you crop it, you will crop those uh, edges here, and uh, you will not be able to recover them. Uh, I think if you turn this into a smart object, let's let's try that. I think it, it will not crop it. Let's choose create convert a smart object, and now use the crop tool and see. I'm not sure, but uh, we will see. Uh, press Control T. Yeah. If you turn this into a smart object before using the crop tool, when you crop the image, it will keep the edges here, so you can see that it, they're not cropped, and that's good because maybe we want to move it slightly like that, and we want to have that texture. Okay. And now I can create the gradient map again. Uh, that gradient map is now integrated in that um, in that smart object. So if you want to edit it, you have to double click on the layer on the smart object, and it will open it in a new layer and uh, you you will be able to edit that layer mask, but um, I'll create it. I created a new one, and if I need to make any fixes here, I can use this new gradient, new layer mask. Okay, so now we have our background set up here. What we need to do next? So that's another um, way of working that I have. So what I want to have is the background and make all the adjustments for the background and create the um, the atmosphere the mood or just create uh, the background how i want it to be and then all the elements that i add i will adapt i will adapt the color the saturation and uh, the contrast to that background so in this case what i did is i used uh, hue saturation first and i decreased the saturation to about minus 25 or 26 let's leave it to minus 26 and then I used levels and I'll take a look at the values that I have here for this adjustment so I used for the shadows uh, 13 that makes the whole image a bit darker the shadows for the midtones I used 1.40 to make the midtones brighter and 233 and it, you can see that uh, it looks really, really bright. So I'll probably leave the highlights how they work. You can see that even with the same values that I used, uh, it's not going to work the same. And that's probably because for the sky, I think I used another levels adjustment because you can see it's a bit too bright. So um, yeah, I made, you can see that there's no shadows on the sky. So I created this levels adjustment above the sky, so it's not going to. I will not clip it because it, it's not going to affect the other layers because this is the 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 bottom layer, so there's nothing else below it. So I can safely use this without clipping it to the to the sky layer, and I'll just make it a bit darker like so. And now I can go back to the levels one and see what we can do here. I'll leave the highlights there for for now. We can come back later and and adjust it. And if you see that uh, you see that yellow on the horizon layer, uh, you can you can use a levels adjustment only for that. So you can create a, 
a hue saturation, sorry, only for that and just clip it to the horizon and decrease uh, the saturation even more or you can you can lower the lightness but that will affect the sky so that's not a good option so let's leave it how it was what we can do though is move the road a bit higher up like so just to cover that and I'll probably get select that layer mask for the road and mask the edge like that make sure you don't have this uh, you don't cover this tree okay so well that's that's our background the next thing that I did uh, is I used another adjustment uh, a solid color so I went down here on the layers palette and chose solid color from the adjustments uh, from the adjustment layers list and this is a technique that I use uh, quite often uh, lately and it consists in making uh, choosing a, a really dark blue like this click OK and I'll change the blend mode of this to exclusion and you can see what it does it um, adds a bit of um, light on the shadows so if I deactivate this and it makes the whole image more uniform I don't know how it does that but that's how this blend mode works and uh, if you leave it to black nothing will happen it has no effect see so just choose a really dark blue like this and you can see the highlights if you use a really bright color it inverts the image so choose a really dark blue like this and that will add a bit of yellow on the highlights and a bit of light on the shadows and for the hue saturation, I think I'll decrease the saturation a bit more to minus 40. Well, let's leave it to minus 32. Okay, so our background is ready for now. What we need to do now is add our elements. And I usually start with the most important ones. So the most obvious thing is to add our model here. I used uh, this image. Okay. So I got this image and in order to extract it, I use the pen tool. Well, for, for manipulations and for, for almost any kind of work in Photoshop, uh, it's almost necessary to master the pen tool because I use, this, I use this tool to make selections and I know it takes more time, but this is my favorite tool by far, my favorite selection tool. And it works really easily. All you need to do is select the pen tool change uh, from up here change this to path and what you do is when you click you create anchor points and you can create paths like that and what you need to do is follow follow the contour follow the edges oops if you want to undo a path just press ctrl z to undo and if you click and drag you can create curved paths like that Avoid making straight lines like this. It's not going. To, uh, you, the purpose of the pen tool is not to do that. If you want to create straight lines, just use the um, the polygonal lasso tool, and you'll end a lot uh, quicker. But um, the the benefits of the pen tool is that you can create really smooth um, smooth curves like this, and that's really useful. So just to create a path like that around your around your model. And if you want to move the image like I'm doing now, like that, you press and hold the space bar. You can see the mouse turns into a hand, so you can click and, and drag and continue creating the path. And um, when you're done, just go around, go around your your model here, extract, uh, just follow all the all the the edges. And when you're done, right click and choose make selection. And by default, leave this to zero, the feather and everything, and just click OK. And the path that you selected, will, uh, that you created, will be converted into a selection. And when the selection is ready, you can click this uh, layer mask icon. It will hide everything else. I know it takes a bit of time, but uh, for me, that's the best tool uh, that gives perfect edges. And that's what I use. You can use any, 
any method that you like. So I have the model already extracted. This is the image. Okay, so uh, you can see how I extracted it and you can see the edges are perfect, even too sharp. Uh, we will deal with that. I'll show you how. And I also kept this cable here from the TV. Uh, I ended up removing it, I think. Let me take a look. Oh no, it's still there. So this is my extracted model. So what I'll do is press Ctrl or Command A to select the entire canvas, Ctrl C, Ctrl W. And let's go back to our canvas. And I'll paste it above all these adjustments that I that I just made, pressing Ctrl V. And it's too big, you can see it's too big, but uh, it doesn't matter. What I'll do is turn this into a smart object because I want to be able to scale it up and down without losing quality. So now I'll press Ctrl Command T to load the free transform again. And I'll locked, I locked the um, proportions and I'll scale this down to about, let's see, 60% or maybe 55 55 and put it right here and rotate it a bit because I want to have the TV straight I think this uh, is a is a good size I saw something here in the background I don't know yeah some edges and uh, if you want to see if your selection is perfect just uh, double click on the layer and add some stroke and you can see there's something there on the background that was not completely removed but uh, anyway it's not too visible what I can do is double click on this to open it on a new layer and do the same this is just to, to check uh, there's something with the background that is not right so I selected the model with by pressing control and clicking on on the thumbnail I'll invert the selection And I want to remove that background. And now I'll close this and I will save it. And now that background is gone. There were some minor things there on the background that I didn't remove when I extracted the model. But anyways, okay, so now I have this uh, here. All I need to do is uh, find the right place for it. If you put it too low, it will look really small. And that's something, <laughs> it's a problem that I had on another tutorial. A lot of people commented that uh, the model was too small or, well, it was too big in that case compared uh, with the background where I placed it. But anyways, um, just find the right position. If you put it too high, it looks huge. So it's a matter of perspective. I think I will leave it right here. Even so, this TV, it's a bit uh, big for this road. But uh, well, anyways, I'll leave it uh, here because I need to place those suitcases there. So I'll probably leave it here. Uh, just a bit lower right there okay and let's name this to model our main element is now added so let's keep going I'll open the stock folder again and I'll add let's see let's add this uh, fence here this is a fence that I used on another tutorial and I didn't show how I extracted it, so I will use this video to uh, show you how I did that. It's the same stock image. Uh, what I did in order to extract this, I want to get rid of the background. You can see this gray background here. I guess it's sky or something. And what I did is I used the quick, uh, the magic wand tool, sorry. And let's set a tolerance of about 20 and see how it works. And what we need to do here is uncheck the contiguous because if you keep this checked, if I click here, it will only select this area um, because there's nothing else contiguous to that area because it's enclosed by these um, darker areas. And the tool detects the contrast change and it keeps the selection within that um, within that area. So what we need to do is deactivate contiguous and click again on an area here and you can see it selects this part here and what I want to do is also include this bottom area so what I will do is press and hold the shift key and you can see it adds a plus and you can also see that it um, checks this option here when I when I do that and with the shift key and hold it I'll click again here and it adds this area to my selection and I'll do that a couple of times just to make sure that everything is included in the selection. 
And uh, with 20 of tolerance, you I can see it's a pretty good selection. Also here on the top, uh, we have a slight problem here. So what I will do is switch to the quick selection tool because I want to exclude this uh, area here. You can see it, it didn't select um, the top here, the top edge. So what I will do is press and hold the Alt key to subtract this from the selection because I don't want that I want that air, that edge to be included. Uh, you can see it didn't do a good job there. So the same thing here. So just go along this uh, this fence and fix the edge. And you will notice that when you reach the end, when you keep doing that, it will deselect the entire image. Uh, well, the entire top part. And that's because what you need to do first is make sure uh, you paint over this area again just to tell Photoshop that you actually want this area and then press and hold the Alt key and exclude that because otherwise Photoshop will understand that you don't want this entire ad, this entire ad, this entire area, sorry. And uh, that's what you need to do. And also here, if I press and hold the Alt key, it probably deselects the entire part. See that? Again, sorry for the for the noises outside. And what I want what I want to do now is do the same paint with a normal brush there with a normal tool, and then press and hold the Alt key and exclude that area. Okay, so let's see what uh, we have here. The area, the top edge is okay. I still want to include this area to the selection like that. Okay, so now my fence is selected and what I want, what I need to do now is click on the layer mask icon and the mask is inverted, so no problem, press Ctrl or Command I, that will invert the layer mask. And I want to keep this layer mask just uh, in case, so what I will do now is uh, with the move tool selected, click on the image itself and drag it to the other tab here, now let go here. And you can see it also kept the layer mask here. And I want to drag this below my model here. And place it here, that's an email. No problem, let's keep going here. And I'll leave this fence um, right here. Uh, maybe I'll move it down or up, we'll see. Okay, but we don't need this part here. You can see the selection is pretty good. We don't have too many edges here. If for some reason you get a lot of white edges, what you need to do is um, double click on the layer. Let's name it fans first. Just double click on it to open the layer styles and simply add an inner shadow. For example, see this little white area here. I'll zoom in just a bit more so you can see it. This white edge here, this white line. If you see uh, a line like that along all this, um, uh, along well, uh, on the entire fence, what you need to do is open the layer styles for the layer and choose inner shadow. And uh, leave the distance to zero and just increase the size until you cover that. Or leave um, like two pixels and then increase the choke bit but usually it increases just the size and then just choose blend modes um, for example soft light or color uh, color works really nice just choose color and use a color similar to the fans you can even sample a sample from the fans itself and then adjust it manually if you need to and change it to color and that way that uh, white line will become will become this color that you set here uh, Okay, so that's uh, that's how you can get rid of it. Or you just try other blend modes uh, like soft light or something to darken them. You can also use refine edge, but uh, well, this is a bit quicker. And if it works, you can try it. Okay, so let's uh, move on and remove this part here, which we don't need. So I'll select the layer mask, um, and I'll select this rectangular marquee too, just to make a rough selection like that. And with Alt and Backspace, make sure I switch the color to black, the foreground color. And I'll press Alt and Backspace to fill that area. And then with the brush tool, uh, make sure the opacity and flow is to 100%. Hardness 
100% as well and just uh, get rid of this. Uh, since this is a straight line, you can see it's a straight line. What you can do, a really cool trick is just click here right on the edge, click once, scroll down on the image, press and hold the shift key and put the, you can see the brush is right on the edge there, press and hold the shift key and click. And that will create a straight line and it will paint with black on a straight line and that way you don't have to do it manually. If I create a new layer, I'll just show you what I did. Uh, I just clicked once, press and hold the shift key and click again here and it connects the two points where you click. And that's really helpful for um, straight lines like, like that one. So our fence there is ready. Of course, we still need to make um, some adjustments and make some shadows, but uh, we will deal with that later. Let's add more elements. For example, let's add the, the tree there. And people have been asking me, well, how do I get all these ideas and where do I get inspiration from? Honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> um, most of my artworks are just uh, improvised along, uh, along the way, but I usually start with a rough idea and I don't know, just keep adding stuff until I get something that I like and I end up with something. <laughs> but uh, you can search for other artworks on places like DeviantArt or uh, I don't know, other networks where you can find good artworks. And I don't know, simply just by uh, practicing, I guess, uh, you end up being more creative. I don't know, that's my opinion at least. So let's see how we can extract this tree from the background. I'll show you a nice technique because this is a this is set on a white on a white background so you can use a blend mode to get rid of that but um, a rough um, selection can be done using the magic wand tool so just again make sure you, de you deactivate the contiguous option click on the white area and you will select the entire white area and then create the layer mask and invert it. If you want to create the right layer mask, what you can do is press and hold the Alt key when you click on this layer mask and it will create the, the layer mask already inverted. So that, that way you don't have to press Ctrl and I, but well. And again, let's move it to the other document, place it here, drag it under our fans here. And you will see that you have a lot of white areas around the leaves here. But I'll show you how to get rid of those. You can use two techniques. Um, the first thing I want to do though is I'll convert this into a smart object. And I'll press Ctrl Command T to load the free transform. Lock the proportions and let's scale it down to about 50% see how it looks. Yeah, that looks nice. And I want to flip it on the other side. So flip it horizontally. I want to have it here, maybe a bit higher up, see how it looks. Maybe make it a bit bigger. I'll place it here. You can see it looks nice, but you still have those white edges uh, right there. So what you can do is, in this case, I don't know if it's going to work, but um, what you can do is duplicate the layer and hide the copy. And on the layer that is um, below, you can change the blend mode of this to multiply. But uh, you can see the, the white goes away, but uh, the whole image becomes darker. So what I'll, what I'll try to do is rasterize this layer. I'm just improvising here because I want to try something. And increase the mid-tones and the highlights. It's not going to work too nice anyways. And then you can re-enable this. I already have a tutorial about uh, this technique. Uh, I'll give you a link to it. Uh, it works really nice for hair, but uh, I don't think it's going to work too nice for this for this tree in particular because it's green. And with a soft brush, you can brush around this, but you can see it makes it look green. And that's not what we want, so let's avoid this technique. It works nice for hair, but uh, for this particular image, it's not going to work too nice. So you can what you can do is, again, use layer styles and use inner shadow. Let's set the distance to zero, increase the size a bit, change, let's see, a green color, like so, and let's leave it to normal just to see what it does. Maybe try color, not going to do much because 
if you use the color blend mode on white, it's not going to have any effect. So let's try other blend modes. Darken works. Let's choose a more unsaturated color like that. And what we can also try is use the magic wand again. And click on that point there to select all the white bits. And again, create the layer mask. And you can see it goes away. Most of that white goes away. And even at 100%, you cannot really tell too much uh, of a difference. Okay, so before and after. The bigger the resolution of the image, the better, because uh, if you use the um, refined edge, you will lose a lot of uh, details here on this uh, really thin branches. That's why I didn't want to use the, the refined edge. And with this same layer mask, I will mask the bottom part of the tree using a soft brush. So yeah, use that soft brush and just paint like that. And another email. Let's close that. And in order to make this look a bit, uh, make it look a bit more realistic, what you can do is use the grass brush, the technique that I used in other tutorials, but you need to uncheck the color dynamics. Okay, so go to window, choose brush, so that you can see it here and just uncheck color dynamics for this particular brush okay so just select the grass brush first and uncheck color dynamics and then let's see if you can if you if we need to change the size well we need to make it a bit smaller i also want to change the shape dynamics i don't want to have too much variation in size and just make that bottom blend in a bit better with that grass there okay now it looks a bit better not much better but a bit better because we need the shadows that's why i'm saying that well now we have the tree uh, standing there what else we need to add that road sign we need to change the heart and put that clock there we need to add the axe and those suitcases so let's keep adding more elements and after we have all of them we will deal with the shadows and with uh, more adjustments to make it look a bit more uniform and make the light effects.